Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple video player in Unity that you can use with play, pause, and kind of scrubbing functionality. So you can skip all the way through, go to where you want, and then have it also update as it's playing along. And it's actually a pretty simple thing to set up, so let's go through the steps real quick. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new scene and run you through everything. Here we go, we'll go to new scene. Uh, the first thing that I did is create a quad. So you go to 3D object and quad, and this is just something that I want to be able to render onto. So let's go find that quad. I'll we'll switch out of 3D mode in the scene view, hit F while I'm over the scene view, and look at my quad. Nice, beautiful quad. I'm going to reset the position though and get it back to zero, zero. Go to the game view and take a quick look at it. Now I want to scale this up so that it's in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And what I can actually do is just change the scale to literally 16 by 9. And now I've got a 16 by 9 canvas that I can start to render my video on. The next thing I need is a render texture. I've got one here, but let me go through the process again. So right click, hit create, and then go to render texture. And I'm going to call this video render texture. There we go. And now I'm going to go over to the scene view, find my quad, and just assign the video render texture to it. So just drop it on, and it, what it's actually doing is creating a material. It's automatically going into this materials folder. It's assigning that to this quad. As you can see under the mesh renderer, we've got the material assigned. And if you look here, the texture assigned to this uh, material is the render texture down here. Now we need to use the render texture because the video player is going to render directly to the texture. That's going to update the, on the, for the material right here and update our quad. Now I'm going to create another game object for the video player. This could also be on the quad, but I like to separate it out. So I'll say video player. And then we'll add a video player component. This is already built into Unity. And I'm going to change the source from video clip to URL. Now I'm going to paste in a test URL that I have. Um, you can see it right here, just go straight across. And this needs to be an actual link to a video file. If you just put in a YouTube link, it's gonna fail. It's not just a raw video. So you need to link to some sort of a video or use the file option if you wanna pull in a specific file that's already in your project. So I've got that set up and I've got render texture as the render mode, but we need to assign a target texture. So let's take video render texture and assign it there. Now, if we just play like this, we're gonna run into an issue that our video render texture actually is 256 by 256. Let's hit play and see what that looks like. And then we're gonna change it. We're gonna make it 1920 by 1080. So there you can see it looks pixely, stretched out and weird, not right. So let's switch that up. We'll just change the size here to 1920 by 1080. And then hit play one more time. We should see the video start to play on this quad. There we go. Nice, high quality, high definition video. Perfect. So, now we want to add in the controls. Let's start by creating a button. So I'm going to go to Game Object, UI, and choose Button. That's going to automatically give me the canvas and the event system. Now the first button that I'm going to use, well, let's go to 2D Scene View mode. Hit, toggle this button right here to go back and forth between 2D and 3D. And I'm going to double click on the button to go to it and then zoom out with the mouse wheel. So you can see the button is way off outside of the canvas. And I'm going to click on the Rec Transform tool and hold Alt and Shift, and I'll center it near the bottom. Then I'm going to hit W, go to the Move tool, move it up a little bit, and then I want to change out the sprite here. So right now the source image is just the default UI sprite. I've pulled in a couple other images that I thought were okay. Uh, you can just search online, find any old play button or pause button images that you want to use. This is the one that I found though. So I'm going to select the button and assign the sprite. If you can't assign the sprite, make sure that you go here and you've checked texture type of sprite, not default. So let's go back to that button real quick. Right now it looks a little funny and stretched. If I go to the game view, you can see it looks very funny and stretched. I'll just hit set native size, and then that gives me, what, it's about 200 by 200. Let's shrink that way down. I'm gonna make this probably 64 by 64. And then we can expand it out and remove the text. I don't need the word button there. I'll take the quad and just move it up. So I've got the quad selected. I'll grab the Y position and just pull that up so that it's kind of out of the way of my play button. And maybe I'll take the button here and just drag it down just a little bit, just grabbing this Y right here and then pulling down. And now I've got a play button and it's not hooked up. So let's hook the play button up. To make it work, we just need to register the on click event. So I'm gonna hit plus. We'll assign the video player right there as the target. 
And then we'll have a couple options here. So if we go to video player, the option's actually off the screen. So let's see what we can do. Let's just drag this up a little bit and we'll select the function, go to video player, and then we want play right here. That's gonna tell it to start playing. Now our video is already automatically playing, so let's get a pause button in there too. I'm gonna first name this thing play button, then I'll duplicate it with control D, rename this to pause button, get rid of that one there, and then we'll grab the X value here and just drag it over so that they're not on top of each other. And we'll change this from play we go back down, I'm not gonna pull it up again, but pause is another option there. So go ahead and select pause, and then change the source image to something pause related. Like, again, I just grabbed a random pause button, use whatever you wanna use. So now let's hit play and try that out. We should be able to play and pause the video. There we go, it's playing, we pause it, and play again, get to watch the rest of the intro for my Unity Mastery course, and we pause it again and play, and you can see it all works. Great, so the last thing we wanna do is get that scrubber in so that we can see how far along we are in the video and click through. Now to do that, we're gonna create a couple images. So go right click on canvas, go to UI and image. And over here on the rec transform tool, I'm gonna to make it stretch along the bottom. So hold alt and shift and click right here, make it stretch all the way across. And I wanna reduce the height, this is way too tall. Let's go down, ooh, 50 still too high. Let's go to like 30. I'm gonna go 30 pixels tall all the way across the screen. Now I need to give it a source image and I've got a gradient bar that I already created. So I'm just gonna drop that in. And if you look at the gradient bar, it's literally just a bar that's, what is that, 588 pixels wide with a gradient from a dark gray to a light gray. It's pretty easy to set up, but I'll have this all available for download other than the two buttons that I downloaded. So you're welcome to just grab that there as well if you don't wanna create your own. Now I wanna set the color of this gradient bar to a red. This is gonna be like my background, my non-skipped forward area or whatever it is. And I'll go with like a darker darker shade of red there. And the reason that I use this light gray to white is so that I can tint it easily in the editor and not have to make special versions for each one of these. So this is gonna be my background. I'll call this background. And then I'll duplicate it and I'm gonna call this one progress. And this is gonna be a green bar that shows how far I've gotten so far. So let's go with a green, go something slightly brighter like that. And then we're gonna change the image type from simple to filled. And then we need to change the fill method from radial to horizontal. That allows us to slide this fill amount up and down to make this bar move. So in our code, we're just gonna be slowly moving this up and listening for clicks. Okay, so we've got everything set up in the scene. Well, one more thing, let's go to the main camera. Let's change this from skybox to solid color and then go with like a black or a white, something that doesn't look like a skybox just floating there. It does look a little weird. Okay, so we've got that done. Now let's get into the code. So we're gonna go to this progress object and we're gonna attach this single script, this video progress bar. And we'll drop it on right there and then we just need to assign the video player. Drop that right there. I'll save my scene, I'm gonna call this demo2, and then we'll run it, see how it works, and then I'll take you through the code. So there we go, let's hit play. Cool, video is playing, I can pause it, I can skip ahead, I can hit play. I can also just let it run, and see the bar going across as it's playing, or I can skip while it's playing and just let it keep going, or skip all the way back to the beginning. Great, now let's look at the code and see how this is all working underneath. So we'll open up this video progress bar. Let's get rid of that, we don't need that. And um, let's take a look, starting right at the top. So we have a public class called video progress bar. It's a mono behavior, just a standard Unity component. But we do implement two Unity interfaces, the eye drag handler and the eye pointer down handler. You'll see why in just a little bit. Now we have a reference for a video player with the serialized field attribute. That's so that it can stay private and still be editable in the inspector. This is where we were assigning the video player right here. So if we go to our progress, see that's this field right here, the video player one. And then we have a private image for progress. And this is actually just getting the image on that same game object. So our progress here, this script is getting a reference to this image and caching it in a variable named progress. And we're doing that in awake. So right at the beginning, we cache that image. Now in our update, we check to see if our video player frame count is greater than zero. This is just to make sure that we actually have a video 
ready to go and loaded. If we don't have a video, it's going to be a zero, so we don't want to be doing this progress update. If it is greater than zero, we figure out the percent of the way that we are through the video. So we take the current frame divided by the frame count. We need to cast these as floats. And then we set the fill amount to that percent. So this is going to give us a value between zero and one. Our fill amount is going to be a value between zero and one. Perfect. That's going to slide that progress bar right across. Now I mentioned before that we have the eye drag handler and pointer down handler. What that does is make us implement these two methods right here and also make the UI system call into these methods for us kind of automatically. So we've got on drag and on pointer down. This happens when we first touch or when we drag along. We need to handle both of these because we want this to happen in both cases. We want to be able to drag along or just tap on a spot. Now what we do is just call a method called try skip and we're passing in this pointer event data. You'll see why in just a moment. So we go into try skip and the first thing that we do is just create an uninitialized vector2 called local point. And that's actually getting filled by this next line. So on line 37, we do an if on the rect transform utility dot screen point to local point in rectangle. Now let's scroll over here and see what's actually, let's just split this out so that we can see the parameters right there. So we're calling it and passing in the progresses rect transform so that's the rect transform of this image this right here and we're passing that in as the first parameter then we pass in the position from this pointer event data this is the position where we clicked on the screen then our third parameter and this one actually caught me up for a little while is the camera if we're using screen space overlay mode this needs to be null if you're if you want to do this in a world space situation you would change this to be the camera that's actually rendering it but for this example and the way everything's set up the value here should be null if it's not this won't work and the fourth parameter is just an out parameter of the local point so if our click is inside the rect transform of this local point is going to have the value and this if statement will return true so we'll run the code right here if we clicked anywhere outside of that this is going to return false and we'll just skip past all this code so if we did click in there we're using math.inverse lerp so if you've used lerp before this is literally the inverse of it we give it a minimum value so the minimum value is our x minimum value of the rect transform so this is the farthest left point of the rect transform in our case right now at the resolution that I'm at that's going to be I think negative 603 and then we give it the positive and since my thing is perfectly centered and the pivots at 0.5 if we look right here again since we use this stretch the pivot automatically got set to 0.5 so our values are going to be like zero in the middle negative 600 and positive 600 for the left and the right so we're doing a lerp between those two and passing in the point where we clicked so if we click right in the center, that's going to be zero. We're going to end up with a 50%. If we click all the way on the right, it's going to be, in my case, 603 or 604. And that's going to be 100% or if you know, go all the way to the left, it'll be that negative 600 value. And that's going to be zero. And then anywhere in between there, we'll get a percent. Then we just call skip to percent, which just takes in that percent and then sets the video player's frame to the total frame count multiplied by the percent. So if we were like, 10,000 frames and we want to go to 50% we're going to go to frame 5,000 set that there and we're done that's everything there is to it it's actually really simple and like I said it, it just works it's clean nice and easy to use so if this is something that you need if you don't want to type the code in yourself that's fine I'll link to a post where you can just go download it in fact I'll let you download the entire project like I said minus the buttons um, if this video is helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit alert buttons, share it with all your friends, all, all kinds of fun stuff. And if you have any questions, feel free to just drop them below. You know, let me know. I'll try to answer them as quick as I can. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great day and keep coding.